Heineken flips over meat. Science teaches us more about yeast and a day for beer appreciation. I am your host Chris Hardy and this is the Straight Beer News for the week of September 11th, 2016. So earlier this week, Heineken debuted a new ad for their Heineken Light beer. If you're familiar with the series of ads that they've been putting out for the past, I don't know, maybe a year or so, they feature Neil Patrick Harris as the main celebrity endorser. And he's done these witty, kind of sarcastic, dry, humorous sort of spots for them that have, I think they've done relatively well. And this one that debuted this week features him along with, uh, next to him, is a man, just an everyday Joe, um, guy with a beard behind a barbecue, looks like he's grilling some food. Neil Patrick Harris begins by giving some of the certain qualities of this beer, how great it will be, it'll be transformative to your life, it's imbued with certain powers to make your life fantastic. Basically just like every other beer commercial you've ever seen about how you can get the girl or how you can run faster and jump higher. After he comes through, I don't know, a couple of those lines about how great the beer is, he comes to this one line in particular that's been kind of controversial online. The best way for me to portray it is going to be kind of through a role play. I'm going to be Neil Patrick Harris and I'm going to be the grill master. So it starts off with Neil Patrick Harris saying, Heineken Light is so great it allows you to flip another man's meat. No. It's never okay to flip another man's meat. Heineken Light is the best, most awesome tasting beer you've ever had. That sounds about right. Can I have one? Can I flip your meat? No. Suit yourself. And that's the end of the spot. That's how it goes. The controversy comes in with the flip another man's meat part. Partly because of the innuendo. Partly because Neil Patrick Harris himself is an out homosexual. I don't know what the big deal was, but apparently there was a big um, to-do, a big hubbub on the internet. As a straight, cisgendered male man myself, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I thought it was maybe a little humorous, but I wasn't my kind of humor, so it didn't really make me chuckle or laugh at all. But at the same time, I understand Heineken trying to be a little edgy and trying to maybe draw a new audience in. Geneticists this week have taught us a little bit more about uh, ye brewer's yeast. There were researchers from the University of Leuven in Belgium who did this study where they analyzed various strains of brewer's yeast, otherwise known as Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And they, they studied these strands from North America, from Europe, from all over the world. Yeasts that were used for brewing beer, yeasts that were used for wine and sake, as well as your common yeasts that are wild in nature. And through their analysis, through their study, what they did was they traced the, the genome of yeast. One of the things that they found out that, as you may know, beer is one of the oldest uh, beverages known to man. And it's been brewed for millennia thousands and thousands of years, humans have known about the power of yeast to transform a liquid into a, an alcohol. What's funny is what they learned through the study was man has been altering yeast, choosing specific traits that are pleasing to them to make a beer taste in a, in a certain way. So in a way they were able to genetically modify yeast from its natural form and to bring, make it more specialized for their intended purpose. Such as brewing beer. Yeah, one of the things that they found was the, the beer yeast, brewer yeast, had gotten to the point in modern day where its main purpose, its main function, the only thing that it had going for it was to chew and eat the sugars and to be essentially become big, fat, happy yeast. Through the process of evolution, it had lost its ability to procreate. It had become asexual. What? So anyway. microorganisms and bacteria and how they worked and that they were living things some really pretty mm, somewhat modern times compared to all of prehistory. This week on Wednesday, September 7th, was National Beer Lovers Day. 
Uh, this was something I didn't even know until the morning of the day itself. And I hope you had a chance to celebrate. Uh, I saw that there were a lot of specials going on, deals at different breweries or coupons or discounts that were available for coming during certain hours of the day. I hope you're able to take advantage yourself. I personally, like I always say, I like to have a beer every day just because you never know when there's going to be a global or worldwide or national beer celebratory day for this or for that so i like to cover my bases i hope you enjoyed your day i know i did mine if you have any more details about this day i'd like to know more about it i don't know if it comes every year on september 7th or if there's a certain uh, or how it even came about so if you have any knowledge about the history of it or maybe tell me how you celebrate it in the comment section below. So that'll do it for this week. Thanks again for watching. I'm your host Chris Hardy. And remember if you like what I'm doing please subscribe or let me know by giving me a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate that or leave a comment in the comment section. I'd love hearing from you. You can also reach me on Twitter at Straight Beer. If you're like me and you get tired of the same news rehash day in and day out, I'm looking at you. Hillary Clinton's health for the news that really matters at the end of your week. I'm talking about straight beer news. That is it. Beer news, the news that matters to you, is what matters to me. I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.